Welcome to Moving On TV and today we have an incredible guest coming on, a really good friend of mine, Paul MacDonald, who runs the Positivity Centre in um, Burnham, Nashton Lane. And I'm just going to show you some of the things I've purchased from there. Look at that crystal. These crystals are stunning. And this one. This I know is amethyst. <laughs> this one drew me because of the gorgeous colours. I think this was about a fiver, and this was about a fiver, and this was about ten pounds. So this is what you can get there at the Positivity Centre once uh, it's open again. Also, you can buy my book, Simply Amazing, Chapter Eight. Casey Armstrong. They sell that. They sell How to Stay Sane in a Crazy World cards, which are channeled by me, and they sell this beautiful, beautiful pendant. If you can see, made by Megan Luna. Uh, they sell beautiful things there, and I've purchased loads of stuff from there. But today, today we're going to talk to Paul, the man himself. Um, I call him Mr. Medicine Man <laughs> because when I go for a session with Paul McDonald, he does the shamanism, he does music, he does rhythms, he does. Um, I use this, the bed, the sound and light bed, and all together get this incredible experience, enlightening experience where I detach from life completely. When I come out of there, I'm a different person. And uh, sometimes he uses um, rhythms and drums and safe sticks, as I say, Mr. Medicine Man. And um, as I said today, Apart from that, he's a very talented musician and songwriter, an all-rounder, as well as an alien for another planet. <laughs> so, uh, a, a fantastic healer. He does, um, I'd say, telepathic healing as well. So, you know, close your eyes and the healing appears and you feel different. Uh, all sorts of talents and skills and experiences that we feel uh, probably are what refer to being an architect of life, which is what I'm going to ask from him. Now, you saw him a couple of years ago. He did um, a program on Moving on TV. It was the Happy News uh, at um, a fair and uh, where he, he sang Happy, Happy, Happy Talk, Happy News. And But today we're going to focus on, as I say, the depth of how far this goes, who is Paul McDonald? How did he get to the level that he is now? Uh, where did it all start? Because as you know, we're moving on TV, I like to dive deep and find out about the man or woman, the human, what is behind this, what is behind it all, but the real person. Okay, so welcome to Moving On TV. Happy, 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 happy news. Happy, happy, happy news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to interview you here on Moving on TV because, as you know, I have a huge amount of respect for your work. I love what you do. Um, I just told the viewers that I go onto the, the lighted sound bed that you have at the Positivity Center. And it's an incredible experience. I always come up there feeling happy and detached and a lot better than when I went on it. So um, tell me a little bit about Paul MacDonald. Where, where did all this start? I mean, you, what, you woke up one day and you suddenly knew everything that you know, or did it start way, way back a while ago? Um, I suppose. I've always been a bit, um, I suppose, very like up in my head a lot. To be quite honest, always been very uh, intrigued and questioning everything. 
maybe sometimes it's a little bit too much, but then as they say, your gift is your curse, your curse is your gift. Sort of works for you in both ways, doesn't it? Um, which is life, I suppose. It, it is a balance. It, it's like that it can't always be one or the other. It's, it's sort of go like that. <laughs> um, yeah, since oh, since I can remember, just really, I suppose, open minded, really, open minded, which caused me a bit of an issue when I was young. Always felt like I wanted to do something, but I never knew what. So I wanted to be creative, wanted to be expressive, but I couldn't work out what it was. Because when I was younger, the only things I could work out that was expressive and creative was either music or your general sort of stuff. Not realising that what I wanted to really be expressing was, was energy. And in the format that I do, which is, well just expressing energy in, in, in ways that people are only just starting to wake up to, I suppose. For years they've been doing it in cultures, but it's even in cultures they've been doing it with, uh, like indigenous cultures, they've been doing it with some sort of format or tradition where it's not quite that. It's more of a, a conscious present flow that wants to express itself through sound, through movement. It's almost as if, and for years, I, I, I think I was stuck with stuff. I remember I used to have ticks a lot. It either I'd make sort of like mm, mm, noises or I'd twitch my neck. Or you mean a bit like kind of like Tourette's kind of? Yeah, like. but it was almost sort of a tick. Like I'd have to do something like a, a certain movement of my neck all the time. And I remember thinking it was like a, if I don't do it, it's you know it was a bit of an OCD, it's a bad luck thing, but more of a feeling. And now I look back on it, I come to realise it was actually like energy that was stuck and stagnant and someone said to me recently and I've only just thought about it like how like I don't like the word like language but I suppose it's like expressing energy is in form of like sound and movement it's like NLP because you're for example like last night I was feeling like I need to express a certain sounds and I think it was a lot of like um it's a lot of like tongue twisty sounds and war, war, ar, 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 and I just go with it and it's a tone which is a vibration which is basically what everything is anyway isn't it vibration so I just go along with it it can it can seem weird or it can seem odd but it's just the tone it's a, it's a sound and most things in life are made up from sound and frequency hence like in the bible it says that now was the first was the word the word is god in the hindu scriptures it started with om it's just that primordial vibration uh, sound and light and and like when you listen to certain music it makes you feel a certain way trance music puts you in a real heady euphoric space soul music you feel in your heart um, and you've got sort of stimulated music like drum and bass or, or heavy rock that, that puts you in that real like, yeah, invigorated and you even get music that makes you feel like, like that goth metal, dark metal stuff, Ugh, makes you feel really, I don't even know the word I want to give that. <laughs> um, almost aggressive sometimes, but um, yeah, different types of music, different sounds do different things. And when someone's singing a love song, they're singing that from their heart. Mm -hmm. So they're literally, the linguistics and the sound which they're producing is coming from a heart space. So, and when someone's dancing, they feel good because they're allowing their body to move with the sound that they're going with. So when you're doing expressing sound and then you're doing certain movements with it, you're basically, you're creating the, an atmosphere around your body. Um, I know I've gone off of what I was talking about a bit here. Yeah. <laughs> can I, sorry, can I just bring you back a sec, Paul? Yeah. Because again, I, I like to, as I say, I want to go back to the beginning. Can I eat my chocolate? You can eat your chocolate, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all about, about freedom. Where did it all start? Because I remember I met you at uh, one of these fairs, these big fairs in Maidenhead, and I sat down beside you. 
you seem like really calm and quiet, like a really gentle being, <laughs> you know, sat down beside you. And but you were totally focused. You started talking to me, explaining to me what you wanted to do, um, the conscious camps, and I think at the art center. But you know, what I want to know is when did all this start? I mean, how was it at school for you, for example, when you went to school? As you say, you're different, you're creative. You're, you're, how did you manage to settle as a child into the school system with all your energy and your ambitions? Or did that start later on when you were older? I had, a, I had a funny childhood. I, don't, I weren't brought up funny, but I was a bit funny myself because I had um, weight issues. And that was that, that put me into like a, um, give me a lot of anxiety because I weren't happy with myself. And I suppose really that's why I do what I do now. Um, you know, I never really, for, for years, I don't think I enjoyed myself because it was all about how I look superficial sort of 3d world stuff and i guess really that that didn't that 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 put me on a like a a neural path of of, of thinking because you're always thinking about yourself you're at you've got anxiety or you're trying to cover the next move or how you're going to feel about something so you think a lot which ends up putting you in the pattern in the thinking a lot. So then you end up thinking about everything a lot. Um, yeah. And I suppose when you're thinking a lot, you're thinking about everything. So you'll be thinking about everything a lot. Like um, a lot of my friends used to do all sorts of stuff. Where I lived in Slough, there was a lot of, there's a lot of like crime, a lot of drugs, a lot of, um, um, robbery, a lot of all sorts, and sorry, because you grew up in Slough, is that right? Yeah, okay. and um, and you know, like friends of mine would be involved in stuff like that, but I'd always be sitting there thinking like about it all from every angle and having compassion. I could never do stuff like that, you know, obviously hang around with people because you, they're your friends when you're younger, and then certain friends would be doing certain things, and it's but where you're thinking, where, where, I, where I would think a lot, it would stop me acting a certain way because I'd be thinking uh, about consequences, thinking about how the person would feel, think about everything. Um, and again, it's like a curse and a gift at the same time because it's sort of in intuitive as well. You don't do stuff because you're thinking, oh, that ain't right, that ain't going to be right, it's going to turn out like that, like really thinking about everything from every angle sort of think yourself out of doing things and sometimes but it ends up you'd also sort of I also used to think myself out of doing stuff that maybe I wanted to do so was there anything yeah. that you liked about school um, or that you... I, I liked school I liked being with my friends mm -hmm. but I didn't I didn't like um, I've never liked doing structured stuff i've never liked being part of a structured society and my mum's very much and i suppose <laughs> you've met my mum <laughs> opinionated um she made me into the man i am today um yeah systematic stuff i've never really gone along with well my mum didn't i think she got kicked out of school early because she didn't like going with set routines it's wow. when it's got it's when you look into stuff and you think, like, well, what's the point of that? Not everything about it, but just certain things that you, you, you can't resonate with. And I mm -hmm. suppose that's the beginning of, 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 of change. If you're here as a person who's, who, who wants to bring in some sort of change, change always gets, um, it always gets, what's the word? No one seems to like change. Or no one's, com no, no one's comfortable with change because they're comfortable with what they're doing. So either, either people think you're weird for what you're trying to talk about or bring in. Um, and I suppose that's another thing. With me as a youngster, I liked certain things. I liked a certain way of dressing, but I never would. I'd never like 
do things that I wanted to do because I'd be worried about how people I know would think or if right. they would take the mickey or I was thinking about it only last night actually about how much I've how much uh, post-traumatic stress is just a whole lifetime of a lot of people everyone's got post-traumatic stress from post-traumatic yeah. stress is just uh, to me there's different levels of it you've obviously got shocking life scenarios and then you've got it where there's something that's affected you deep deep rooted in you because mm. you couldn't be yourself not being able to be yourself is post-traumatic mm. stress because it leaves a, a stressful energy in you which, which accumulates and builds up and ends up disturbing other aspects of your life like you can't be yourself um you can't um act a certain way because you're worried about what your parents are going to think you're worried about what your friends are going to think then that ends up repressing you hmm. then you're not happy so you felt like this as as a young child did you yeah you feel like that that you couldn't be yourself and you couldn't yeah. express yourself yeah partly not just because of other people, but because of me as well. Like there were certain things I wanted to do or certain things I wanted to wear, but I wouldn't because I, I would think that I looked silly in them or, or, or I would look silly looking like this or dressed like that. So that I had a lot of self-judgment and that, that, that put me off. But then where did the self-judgment come from? Something in me or something must have happened that I maybe can't even remember that, that, that created self-judgment in me. Mm. So uh, how do you deal with it? Pardon? How did you deal with all of those feelings as a young um, Drugs. I got um, stoned out of my face a lot. Um, alcohol, drugs. Uh, music was a good one. Um, but I loved music anyway, but I suppose you do use things to escape stuff. Yeah, drugs. I suppose I, I got into cannabis, got into ecstasy. Uh, later on, I got into cocaine. Um, yeah, it was funny, and even again, another thing I was thinking about today, like how we use stuff. You know, I still. Everyone's on a little journey. You still have all have our little traumas and our things come up. And I remember yesterday, I thought, oh, I can't remember what was that come up, and I thought, oh. I feel like having a drink and I thought why would I why would I want to drink why would I want alcohol well just to maybe suppress something that's coming up because hmm. everything's coming up whether you're a therapist whether you're whatever things are coming up for everyone even more so now especially and, now <laughs> and the more the more real deep rooted stuff is coming up the really deep rooted stuff and then we'll try and find ways to get out of it sometimes because we don't want to sit in it because it could be painful and then we may find ourselves wanting to do certain things like, oh, I'll have a drink to suppress it. And that's the worst thing you can do because alcohol already affects your liver. And then if it's something, if it's a suppressed thing that makes you feel angry, then that's even worse because you've got the double, that, that, that the alcohol affects your liver and also anger from the suppressed emotion affects your liver. And then you're mm -hmm. going to use the alcohol that already affects your liver to suppress that energy which is affecting you, which affects your liver, mm. that particular trait of anger. Um, so it's just the not liver is the seat of the emotions. Exactly. Yeah. And all addictions are just hiding the void inside, as you said. It could be anything. It could be drinking, eating. With me, it was food. So we all have um, different types of addictions to hold back, rather than facing and confronting and now we're in the space where we have to we have to deal with everything because of this down and because of the way things are so you you must be very strong then because how, how did you come out of this i mean how long did you have these addictions would you say um actually practice up until she leads to another you know? but no no about so i'm 37 now 27 would be 10 years. That would be about 24, 25. I stopped smoking. I, I stopped a lot of things at once. Alcohol, cannabis, How uh, we then? eating meat. How, at the same time? Yeah, and it sent me a bit sort of schizophrenic for a moment. <laughs> I, stopped, I, stopped, I basically stopped everything that I was using as a, a crux or whatever. And the reason I stopped is because obviously I had kids. 
and I didn't want to carry on. I remember when I first had them, I was doing all sorts, and it's like, and I would have um, bad anger issues, and you can't be doing that around your kids. You can't be, you can't be um, acting like that around them. So um, that was the reason I stopped, and then that opened up a whole a whole another um, avenue because you're stopping something which was suppressing things. I remember I'd stop because I'd have like heart palpitations. I'd be doing lots of cocaine and I'd have like heart palpitations. I'd have panic attacks. Um, Summer? Hang on, I'm pausing. Okay, right, we're back. So you were telling me um, you basically stopped these addictions because you wanted to be a better dad. Yeah. Because in a way, you know, Tony Robbins talks about addictions and pain. And he says when the pain is too strong or when you have something more important than the pain, you can conquer that pain. But it takes that mindset. It takes that something that is more important to you than the addictions. But it's a very brave thing to do to be able to just stop. I mean... You know, hard, hard. Um, Culture. Your, your, everything comes up that you were suppressing. Mm. Um, boredom, um, frustration, anger, um, issues of self worth. Um, Issues with, with, with like major ones I had around, um, still getting over really. Ones involving like um, masculinity like, am I good enough? Am I do I look manly enough? Do I act manly enough? And that that's a big one when in connection with like being um, doing therapy work and doing this sort of stuff because it's all classed as um, airy theory or or um, more, more feminine and, and, and soft. So that really, really has to get you to have to push past caring about what people think about you, whether they think you're um, all of what you feel like you're not enough of, basically. Mm. That's a really interesting point, Paul, because there are a lot of men that are waking up at the moment, and I've had chats to a few of them, they don't understand. The heart chakra is opening and yeah. they cry and they're starting to feel their feelings. So what advice can you give them as you've been through all of this? Um, what would you suggest they do with all of this? Just be yourself. It's like, um, I mean, even today, I'm having a bit of a day today where I can feel, I suppose I can feel emotion coming up because as I'm talking to you, I can still feel stuff like in my heart of what things I'm going through at the moment because it's always coming up and I don't like the idea of pretending that we're we're um we're beyond everything we need to put across this approach that we're beyond everything that we're here just as a teacher or just someone helping like you can tell you what every a life coach has a life coach everyone's me it's all about just being honest and being truthful and stop hiding like um you know, I can sit there now and think I could see like some of my body language is a bit like that. Well, that's how I feel today. So what? So why do I, why, what's the point of me putting on like a, a, an act of like, hey, that's not being truthful. I want people to be truthful. I want people if they, um, yeah, if they feel, if they, whatever they feel, just, just, just express it. And it does a but, but don't always, you know how people are going to respond to you they might get annoyed but that, that that's that's that doesn't matter you've got to express how you've got to express you're expressing yourself or letting out your 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 stuff may bring a reflection of a load of of, of, of attacks at you or may bring whatever but that's the echo that's the bit that you've got to try and get through they're there to help you feel even more you know like we've had ourselves and we've had it with a travel like when we've We've reflected that feeling of self-worth in each other or, or 
and you and you 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 need to go into it sometimes. And the reason someone's doing it to you because a part of you is on a subconscious level is, is obviously wanting it from them for you to yeah. dip that low. It's like a, sometimes you need to go really low to come out of it and everyone around you will, will, will do that for you as much as at the time you, you think, how can you do that? How can you make me feel like that? Well, they can only reflect what a part of you is feeling like and wanting. And it's almost like it gets louder and louder and louder until you completely let go, which I know for your, for example, yourself, it, I, I know you went through that big time earlier in the, like the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And like, but the, the shift is massively obvious to people who know you. Thank you. Um, we're basically, because we're all mirrors and teachers. Yeah. We're all reflecting. But isn't it the synchronicity beautiful today? Yeah. Like I wanted to see you. I wanted to see the real Paul, the real Paul McDonald the real person without any masks and that's what's coming through and that's beautiful to yeah. say because it's so important but where do you think you picked it all up i mean you weren't born to think oh i'm not good enough i'm not manly enough i'm not whatever and it's like people from the outside they see you as this gorgeous being this really talented amazing man with, from the out, we can see you like that. We, we see you as this really positive, this really um, intelligent being that is put together with the cell, this beautiful positive space that we can come into, as you say, how grateful I am, a place to express all my grief and where I was just picked up the floor. Why, why can't we see ourselves? as that person who told us that we're not amazing what do you think where do you think that comes from i don't know it's just sort of a, do you know what it's what i've been like asking myself to be quite honest <laughs> you weren't born like that so what messages did you pick up i don't know who gives you these i mean I, when I, you I, think I don't about know. I've always, from the minute i can remember for the moment I can remember, I've always been strangely, well, I can only speak for myself because I don't know other people's minds, obsessively thinking, it is like, so for me, like I was born like that, for me, I can never remember feeling, um, I can never ever remember feeling content. There was always a wanting to do something, there was always, I don't know. The, I don't even know how to explain the feeling. It was uh, obviously like a precursor to to, to 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 do what I'm doing now. And not that I advocate what I'm saying right now, but sometimes maybe something is there, a discomfort is in there to create change. I was reading a book, this book called ET Explore Race, and then and it was talking about in this book about using using discomfort as an impetus for change and it makes sense and if for example there's various people i know who have had discomforts in their life or they've had issues inside of them and because of that it's made them go into doing and learning and going and getting into all sorts i mean one bloke is he's into he's into many different things um real highly intellectual things uh he, he, he does all sorts I, I won't say what because but he, he does all sorts where he's helping a lot of people where he's he's all sorts to do with with helping people to do with uh, an expert and a sport to, to, to all sorts of stuff and he's done that he's learned all them things because he's had to find something to help him um maybe mask or put aside or repress certain things he does but if you were to look at it on a bigger picture outside of himself everything that he's done how much how that's helped other people and it's almost like his discomforts have helped him do stuff that's helped other people but if he didn't have them discomforts there he maybe have just stuck with 
been happy sitting there in a garden, you know, doing nothing. So it's almost if you look at things on a on a broader, or whatever the word, a wider, broader scale. I can't think of the word I'm trying to use. It's almost like our negatives and positives serve each other sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying, in a way, sorry, you're saying that everything we go through molds us. Yeah. Molds us into that person that we need to be now in the awakening. In yeah. The I mean, for, for me, for example, I've, I've, I've tried loads of um, loads of different modalities of healing, and then some of them will work, some won't, and then I always think. <laughs> we are going to the allotments to steal some of with. I got a second. I can yeah. <laughs> carry on. Um, so I can't remember where I was at. Well, we were saying that everything molds us. Everything you've been through, all the difficult experience that we go through, is it molds us into the person we are because we're coming into a new consciousness, and only certain people will be able to go with us. And I think yeah. we've got to go through certain things in life to wake up. It's like... Or without that, I don't think you can, you know, unless you were born awake. When I sit there and think that I, I, wanted, I wanted a centre that can help people, but I want to help people in many different ways, and I don't think there's one set way for one person. And I never like routine, because I don't think routine helps an individual and I think people either need to go in themselves and really work on themselves using their own intuitive nature which goes on to the stuff I do but or there needs to be many different ways I don't believe you should just have one way of following things but some people might like to so I've been watching people for years. I watch stuff online. I watch how other therapists do things. I watch. I try and look at things, and I try and look at well, it works for that. But then, I look. For, I I look purposely for flaws in things, because I want to question how things work and if there's a positive of it. But I want to. I want to look for the negatives because there always is going to be opposites of stuff. And some people could say, "Oh, you shouldn't do that," but it's. I think it's, it's served me, so my thinking analytical mind, which, which give cursed me a lot when I was younger, has served me for what I'm doing now because it's made me look at every aspect of something. Like, does it work? Where doesn't it work? How doesn't it work? What's the negative knock-on effect? So I'm trying to work out like, the best forms of healing, how it works, where it could go wrong. Um, but So it's helped me decipher and find a broad range of different healing techniques and different methods and different stuff. So if one thing don't work, another approach works. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. And the, the center that we've got, which is a holistic healing center, I want it to come from that angle. Like I want to have the different people there doing different things. Some people come in, for example, we get people, what I call, I call yogis, yoginis, a lot of the yoga women, they'll come in or we'll have, shamanic people we'll have the goddess women who come in and they like to do things that are very feminine or orchestrated or you'll have um, people who do reiki or people life coaches or people into food health people into corporate life coaching so you'll have so many different types and sometimes you have to um you have to learn to almost mimic them all to be able to talk on on on, on their level Otherwise, it's no good when you've got someone who's coming from a corporate background and I start talking about the airy, fairy, angelic side of things. Because um, healers, you've got so many different types of healing. You've got your, your clinical NLP type of healer. You've got your new age um, angel energy healer. You've got the, the shamanic healer who relies on Mother Earth and Mother Nature. They're all... You know, if you look into it all, it's all exactly the same thing. It's just being issued or being formulated or orchestrated in a particular way to suit a particular mindset. You've got very earthy people. You've got very mind-orientated people. As we were talking with, with uh, Mick yesterday, some people you have to approach from a, a mental, logical point of view. Some people you have to approach from a purely energetic point of view or some people from a very heart space 
So there's so many different ways of of of, of attacking inner demons. Some people are very um, restricted. So you've got a, a nice, a, not a, a light approach of soothing music and just safety. Other people, they want details. They want to know how to understand something logically. Whereas some people like just feeling through intuition. Mm. Um, well, it's people, sorry to stop you there. Yeah. Uh, because some people need tough love, as we know. And some people, tough love actually works really well. <laughs> yeah. But we're all different and as you say but it's really interesting that with this new awakening people are coming together regardless of their healing modalities yeah. I see what you're saying and but people seem to be connecting this huge light that has come onto the planet this new consciousness is people with different modalities different healing types they're all coming together it's kind of like dark against light do you understand what I mean? They're not, because it's like we have this one focus that we want to take away, <laughs> something that isn't good, good for us. So we've all come together. And a lot of our issues, like even between us, um, issues have gone. And people, because people are connecting. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In such a big way. We know we have to do that in order to save our planet and humanity. We, we've let go of a lot of the issues. I suppose we've let, we've let go of a lot of issues in us inside ourselves, you know, like stuff mm -hmm. that, I don't know, let's, let's use us as a friendship, for example, certain things which I may trigger you or you may trigger me. We're having to let go of them because they were things to do mm -hmm. with self-worth or am I good enough or someone, you know, whatever needing attention and all that and we sort of help each other get over it until it's sort of it's gone mm, mm. they're slowly fading away thankfully no, you know, there's obviously still yeah. stuff there that we've got a long way to go of deep conditioning and traumas as whatever we whatever our um disharmonies and disharmonics in us still bring up but, um Back. Sorry, so we're talking about your work at the Positivity Centre, but I just want to go back again a little bit because I say this is what fascinates me, is when was your first spiritual experience? Can you actually recall that? Can you go back and recall <laughs> when, when you, you, you would say the shift happens? Because we all have a shift. It's funny you say that. Hmm. I remember as a kid, I'd watch... Right, let me actually, I need to readdress it. I, when I started getting into, I remember I had a stage where I got into Hinduism and uh, that was after I stopped the drugs and things. Or was it? I can't remember now. But anyway, there was a point where I got into Hinduism and uh, that got me into uh, Krishna and I was coming at spirituality from a religious point of view. And I remember I had these amazing meditations on Krishna they were like, I remember having feelings of expansion and feeling like I was everything and nothing at the same time. Literally felt like I was universes. I was, I could feel I was the size of universes. I can't Sorry, explain. Can I just ask, sorry, Paul, was this before you gave up? Or no, it was. When you were younger? No, because I was doing sort of, I was mixing both at the same time. So it wasn't. Okay. I thought it was, but it wasn't. And um, that was when I was about. Well, Shannon, my daughter's 17 and I'm 38, so she was about three years old. What, about 23 maybe? 22, 23, 24, around that age. And I had that, I remember I was in my bedroom and I remember having one real strong Kundalini awakening and it was just before I had a driving lesson. And uh, yeah, that one, that one good, I didn't bring myself back down again. Went out to do Went out into a driving lesson, span out into to the universe. <laughs> to the um, bang bang. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. But it was more the one where I had this expanse feeling. But what that wasn't the first time I had it. It was when I had it afterwards, I sat there and I thought, I knew I've had this feeling before and I, I remembered that I used to feel that. But I didn't realise it was a spiritual experience. I remember when I was a I can't I must have been about 
seven or eight or not between seven and ten maybe six and ten i would watch star wars and then i would go upstairs and i remember i would like close my eyes and it was the end of Star Wars, you know, at the end of, or the beginning of the end of Star Wars, where you've got space when you've got the lines going through it, like time, mm. uh, warp speed sort of lines. And at the end, it used to move up like that with the credits, like it was in space. And I remember I wanted to sort of mimic that. And I remember I'd close my eyes and I would see something like that with my eyes. And then I would push lightly on my eyes and I'd start seeing all these, it was like blackness, but then there would be these white little flicks. Yeah, I, I did that. Shape the lines. Yeah. And then, I, I don't understand when you close your eyes. How can you actually see it? Yeah, it was strange. And I remember I would then go under the cover and I'd put myself in complete blackness and I was meditating. I was just concentrating on the blackness that I could, in my eyes, or the, that I couldn't see enough, but I would concentrate on just that. And I remember having that feeling back when I was about six or so, I was, so I was having these expanded states of consciousness at the age of seven years old without realizing what, it, and I remember having this sort of like, whoop feeling that, that you get when you're in, when you're asleep sometimes, you get that feeling where you feel like you've dropped. Yeah. Would have, and it would make me, I remember thinking, whoa, I feel a bit weird, or I felt mm -hmm. dizzy or disorientated, um, but not knowing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was probably that was, the first, it's really yeah. strange you should say that because as a child I used to do that a lot and I kept seeing beautiful colours and shapes and patterns and I kept thinking, well, how can I see them? My eyes are closed. And so we, but I never, you know, related to it the same way as you did. I just mm -hmm. saw the colours and things. I just remember thinking there was some connection between wanting us about Star Wars and space. Oh, I remember having experiences where, where I would sit there and think, um what's you know like we've got god god's created everything and, and then i would think well who created god and i'd really really <laughs> and i'd really feel into it and i remember i'd i remember it was like whoa i'd freak out i have a bit of a panic attack because it was so strange and i remember thinking well as well like what created life well what was before life and then i'd have that sort of really lucid feeling where I'd, it's almost like I questioned myself out of this matrix of what, what I don't use matrix in the terms of like the system. I mean, matrix in the terms of, of the life illusion. It's almost like I jumped outside of that safety net of, of, of general life of, of going along. And I remember I think, whoa, what is life? What's hmm. outside the planet? Space. Well, what's space inside of? And it would be like, you know, when you really feel that for what's inside, you know, it's, it's, it really opens your, your mind up. Mm. And, uh, I think that is maybe sort of where a lot of things started. Now I look back. Because once you, once, you, once, you, once you have them sort of realisations or them sort of oh, moments, you can't go back. You open up a something. I'm not sure what. You open some sort of thought process up or subconscious thought process up or, or, or whatever we are, you expand some you expand some sort of state of awareness in you just from that one thought. And then it's always there. And then it I suppose it makes you question everything then. So obviously you couldn't talk to your friends about this. <laughs> um, it, it was more I'd have it in like moments where I'd be sat, I always remember I'd I'd be sat in a certain seat. I remember being sat in my, you know, like when you have your designated seat with your mum and dad in your house, that they have, it'd be my mum's seat when she wasn't there, or I, I remember being sat there and just remember being sat in my mum's chair and having that experience, thinking, oh, what, who created God or what's outside of space, you know, where does that stop? Oh, oh, oh freak out. Uh, and I don't know why it freaked me out. That's the one thing I'm curious, why it freaked me out. Why does that freak us out? When, when we get to something where we go, oh, why, why do we freak out? Why do you think so? I don't know. It's almost like because you suddenly, you lose an identity thing. Mm. And I think... So even as a child, why would it freak you out as a child when you start to get these experiences? 
because you can't analyze it the same way as you could as an adult but then you just have to go on facebook now and you can join a group what could you do when you were that age you know difficult was it was different then wasn't it just just left with it in my own head it's not something yeah. it wasn't at that age i didn't like sort of go out and really talk about it but then i remember like i remember like stuff like supernatural stuff like ghost stories and things being really like mysterious and then now you know I, I got to a stage where i started going into mediumship stuff and it's almost like i look back now and think why did i ever find that scary or most people believe in stuff like that but they don't they believe in it from a very uh it's almost like an internal knowing but then they won't look into it anymore they won't how would you explain it? Everyone believes in ghosts, or most people believe in ghosts, but they're more from a a mysterious humour or I can't explain it. They they believe into it until it really gets into it. And then they'll go, oh no, it's rubbish. But everyone has an inkling. It's a bit like when people get close to death's doorstep and then they'll believe in God then. It's if there's a slight bit of belief in people, even if they don't believe in stuff, there's some dormant bit in them that does know that there's more okay so what do you believe happens when you die what do i believe happens when you die yeah you've got a well, you're not just this body are you, you do, can't believe. do you believe this inside is there anything that you can prove it that you believe not that you just think or other people have told you because yeah, it's more of a case of when you when you have experiences of like um for example i when i got into mediumship stuff i used to be into a mediumship circle or self-development circle with to do with psychic awareness or telepathic stuff and and um and exercising that that what that's what you do when you're in a circle you focus on exercising it um getting yourself more receptive more more um sensitive to feeling stuff through self-awareness through meditation through journeying through asking each other questions through it's almost like uh, self-awareness exercises stroke um what do they do in um scientific labs evidence um tests so you'll be mm -hmm. testing each other up through stuff asking questions for example i remember doing an open platform once where you go up and you sort of try mediumship mediumship and i remember saying to a woman oh you you was in london on a, a birthday and you, you you fell it was near trafalgar square i said and you had an, an accident you sort of twisted your ankle because she was wearing these big high heels and she said yeah and uh, and another time with cecile's my partner's friends in france I give him a reading and I remember telling him stuff about a fight he had with his best friend when he was younger, something to do with his nan, a particular mirror he had in his house or loads of different stuff. And it was all true. Mm. And it, it was more of a test at the time just to, to see how it works. And it wasn't, I've never been so bothered like, look, look what I could do. It was more to get them to realize that it's possible. And, um, yeah, so you've sort of got to ask yourself, well, where, how do I know that? If I'm part of this physical body, how do I know? Or how can I dip into something that happened to this bloke when he was younger? Or, for example, my mum, she had an experience. Um, I can't remember what time it was. It was when the Olympics were on a few years ago. She experienced... She watched something that wasn't on until live two days later. Three hours of TV. She sat up all at night watching it. Told my dad the next day that the blonde worm woman won on the Olympics. And my dad went on to tell her, he couldn't have. It ain't on until live tomorrow. And she says, well, I bloody watched it. And anyway, the next day or two days later, they watched it live. And my mum ended up commentating moment by moment the next three hours before it happened. So how can I... How can I pick up on travel, something? Isn't it? Sorry, so, that's like, like time travel. Yeah, but it's outside of you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's outside of you. Like you're picking up on stuff outside of you. 
that's not you, that's not in your physical body. You know, you're, you're, you're witnessing and picking up. Or, for example, you would, you would talk to someone about someone who's passed away and you talk about certain ailments or certain feelings or things that the person had wrong with them. Okay. And you know, you know it because you get given the feeling to feel yourself um, very slightly or you'll get a slightly heady feeling and you'll think, oh, the person had a, uh, they suffered with headaches, for example, or extreme headaches. It would, you could be willy-nilly and say, well, everyone does, but it would be stuff that was very prominent, like someone who would suffer with um, a particular thing often. So you'd put that across to them and then they'd end up saying, yeah. Well, how clairs, do you know that? Basically. You're clairsentient you're clairs yeah. because you feel. But, but that must, the thing is, you're an empath and you're clairsentient. How, how does it make you feel when you know all this incredible stuff and people can't take it on board? Does it really, it must really frustrate you. Um, I suppose that's been part of the, that's been part of the thing really, part of the, um, I don't like using the word problem, but I suppose in the past, it, but that's been part of the problem. And even to a degree now, it can be like that. For example, I remember having one morning where I felt absolutely rubbish. I felt terrible. And I remember saying to my partner, just, I want to get, I mean, she luckily, she knows what I'm about and what I do. So she sort of rides along with her. I remember saying to her one morning, God, oh, get away from me. And I just said to her, she was sat opposite me. And I said, I just want to push you and push you and push you away. I mean, that's a negative experience in a way, uh, perceived negative. And I remember saying to her, I want to push you and I want to just keep pushing you away, like pushing, pushing. And then like half an hour later, my brother phones up and says that his, his, his girlfriend's just give birth. So what happens when you're giving birth? The mum really just wants to push that baby out. Uh, or had it where I felt terrible, really terrible. And then I was told that my, my mum and dad said their dog had died. And it's just, I mean... People could say, oh, well, you could say that for anything, but I've had it where I, you were, um, I remember a particular day saying, oh, I felt really trapped, really, really trapped inside myself. It was a suffocating feeling and someone went on, I don't have a TV, so I don't watch the news and I don't want to. Um, yeah. a, a friend of mine told me, oh, well, there were a load of Chinese people were in a lorry. They, they, they were stuck in a lorry, suffocated. Um, so it's almost like you get, the more you connect yourself or become aware of your connection with everything, the more you feel everything. Mm. But then consciousness is a, is a, is a broad thing. Like I said, if my, I, I picked up from stuff in the past, my mum's picked up from stuff in the future, then that goes to show that future at some level already exists because she's experienced it before it happened. And that goes to say, well, if stuff in the future has already happened and my mum's picked up on it through a visual element and watched it visually, who's to say you can't pick up and experience the sensation and feelings of things before they happen? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you, you experience stuff that have got nothing to do with your direct life, yet you're experiencing it, but then you'll sit there and you may associate that feeling with something that's going on in your life. Mm. Because we're all connected. Yeah. Basically connected. And I mean, I've had experiences like that. You know, um, I knew my mum had died. It was very strange. Um, I just did an audition for um, Britain's Got Talent, I think. And, and for some I sang You'll Never Walk Alone, which was my mum's favourite song. And then I walked out of there and I, um, I just knew my mum died. I knew. Yeah. And my husband called me and said, mum just died. It's like... I know what you mean. You pick stuff up. You feel a bit because you're an empath and because we're all so connected. So it's very interesting what you said about people do get that. You know, we can't control the emotions that we get. So if you feel when you're around to sell or if anybody's around someone, I, I, I don't want to be here. I don't want them here. I want to push them away. Something's coming up. They're mirroring they're showing you something as well about yourself that you can't deal with. Maybe they're trying to wake something up inside you. Yeah. So how do you like use that for people? As I say, a lot of people who are waking up are going to start feeling triggered all over the place. 
I mean, look at it. Look at what the news is throwing at them. There's confusion. There's all, everything's coming up at the same time. So what would be your advice to people, newly awakened people that are getting triggered all over the place? Because you and I know how that feels. I know how I deal with it. How do you deal with it? Going back to um, what I started talking about earlier, I suppose using using uh, modalities, but me, I'm all about like using your using your own. Like your body knows how you need to deal with something. Your body's got its own sort of conscious intelligence. It knows how to 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 get you get you out of something. But you've got to ask it. It's almost like it's a lesson for you, and it's. It's a, it's, a, it's a lesson for you to go through to experience how you're going to deal with something and it won't help you until you've decided you want that help because it's a lesson and it is a lesson about how you're going to react to something it must be because i can't see evolution quite being the case because if the future's already happened there's nothing to evolve to so it's almost like you're not going to really change anything but you can change with the future's already happened, how, how, how can you change it? But you can change your perception of things. It's, 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 it's such a vast thing. Once you start getting into consciousness, it's a uh, deep land. But mm -hmm. just, just from that one aspect, I mean, this isn't the absolute truth, what I'm saying, because there's a whole other different areas or ways of looking at it. But for example, if something's already happened and you can't, it's going to happen the way it's going to happen, you can't change how it's going to happen, but you can change how you perceive it and by changing it and how you feel and experience it. So for example, I'm having a certain thing happen. I call it like an echo in time, basically. It's always going to happen, but each time you sort of deal with it in a different way. Um, so for example, something comes up which triggers a certain feeling in me and which which my neurology knows that particular feeling and links that with other past stuff, then I'll start going into a whole extreme of all different experiences and it will all get out of hand. Oh, feelings of self, everything, any memory or anything related to that particular negative feeling will start shooting off in my head. And then it becomes a whole load of different stuff. And then I start attaching that to do with all stories in my head. Um, but that's when you start going into your head into into thought patterns so the best way is to, to get out of that is to go into a moment and the best way to go into the moment for me is it's almost like an internal nlp in the basis of like neuro linguistic programming which is you you sort of you stop that that neural pathway before it like goes yeah. crazy and the best is that way to, you know, is that where your music comes in for me, yeah, because music, when I do music, I'm so in the music, I'm not thinking anymore. It's just purely about feeling. And then I can also, if I've got a negative feeling, I channel that into the music. And then by channeling it into the music, I sort of not only stop that particular feeling, I, I, I use it to feed, it's almost like energy's energy, and I'll use that emotion to feed whatever music I'm creating. And I always have it in my head that whatever I'm creating is positive. So even if I'm having a negative feeling, it's, it's going to be used to create a positive outcome. Yeah. Um, so is that the answer, Paul, to find your talents and your creativity? I think so be able to deal with these blocks and well a lot of the blocks or these emotional things yeah. up. Oh, I'm in, didn't I? it's, it almost comes like full circle it's like the very things that give you your issues are the very thing that you use to get out the issues which it and and to which is all about self-expression it's basically we're learning to completely express and embody our absolute pure being which is when in present moment being is being yourself and expressing yourself exactly how you need to in the a, in a most productive positive way possible um, and if you don't do that you feel stagnant and then because you feel stagnant you feel resentful then you get annoyed at people then you project it because of maybe people who who do do that and you'll feel jealous 
then you'll feel upset because you like and then it goes down it just goes in a vicious circle so be yourself as much as possible and which then goes on to what it is i do with being yourself the whole idea of what i do is sort of getting people to go into their intuition to learn about themselves to feel what they feel inside to let up all of the, the rubbish that isn't them which has created blocks in them and once they let that out then then they're almost sort of, as they let their, 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 the stuff out that's blocking them, it's almost like their real self is tethered behind it and that comes through afterwards. So they yeah. unblock all of that stuff, all that stagnancy, all that conditioning, all that repression, then, they're, then they, the, 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 the real them can come through. Yeah. But then you've got to work on, then they may have like embarrassments, they may have fears. So it's about getting them back into their body, out of their head, which is saying and, and thinking fear, thinking embarrassment, thinking about, oh, what about this, what about that? Stay in your body, stay in your breath, get out of your mind and just express and feel and be and do. And then the more they nourish that, the more they, 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 they uh, tend to that, the more they strengthen and empower that until it becomes a natural thing to be themselves. Yeah, and I mean, what I love about your work is it's very similar to the way I work. As you say, because people are different and everyone needs something different. So you have the music, which is part of an aspect that you work with. And then you work with light and sound and vibrations. But I love when you combine everything together and you do your medicine man thing that I call, where your shaman thing, where you literally heal using the light the sound the vib up vibrations the singing you go up and down the chakras and and it's just an incredible experience but so how do you feel about using that with people different types of people how how can you use all those incredible skills and talents because um as we say different people people are different and unique and so how can you, the word I'm looking for is, how can you create something that is going to be effective for everyone, but maybe in a different way? Do, do you know what I mean? Like, when I'm tailor it. How can you tailor it? Well, this is... Exactly, <laughs> That's what I'm trying to ask. This is exactly what my whole emphasis of, of, of tailoring and intuition. When, people, when you're... I don't want to teach, I want to hold space for allowing people to find their own technique. So it's about, and, and I call it um, biodynamics, I've, I've sort of labeled it and called it. It's like the Bio, word biodynamics, bio, did you say? Biodynamics. It's a bit of a word what play. What does that mean? <laughs> a bit of a word play of bio, which you've got, bio means life. If you, know, you know when you've got about biology, biochemical, biophysical, like everything comes under that term bio. And bio means life, basically. And to me, life stands for, you know, the L-I-F-E. For me, is logical, intuitive information for everyone. Logical and intuitive, because they've both got, you know, the yin-yang thing. They've both got their, their, for everyone, and everyone's got it within them. So you want, my whole emphasis is to get people into exploring and becoming aware of their own self modalities, um, which is the, 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 the whole process of it. Everyone's got it in them. Everyone's connected to the same source. Everyone's got that intelligence, that consciousness in them. So everyone's got their own way of doing things. And that was for years, I wasn't happy with everything, with anything, because I thought, I don't like that. I don't want to do that because I don't just like doing that. I'll read a book and think loads of people I know they'll read a book and then they, they, they can't match everything in that book and they'll get frustrated or think there's something wrong with them. Oh, and then they'll get onto another book and do the same thing and think, well, maybe you're supposed to just take a little bit from that book, a little bit from that, a little bit from that person because that's what you need because you're not just that. You're not their story. When someone shares, if I was to share a book called Biodynamics by Paul McDonald. That's not going to resonate with everyone because that's my, as a whole thing, that's my thing. 
but I'm going to share that to inspire other people. But then they can take, they may take two pages out of it, which they need. They may take two pages out of a Tony Robbins book, two pages out of, out of an inspiration from your, your material. And that, uh, what's the book you're in? I to stay saying the, oh, sorry, Simply Amazing. Simply Amazing. That's the one, let's plug it. <laughs> Good. They sell it at the shop. Don't worry, I already told people. <laughs> I'll well, tell them again. So people like Chapter eight. <laughs> and but that way you're formulating that's what we all do. We take little bits of information, take stuff, and we accumulate our own belief system. And it is our belief system. You could say it could be others, but you're you're taking a reflection of what you believe. But you don't have to be everything. You don't have to resonate completely everything with like Muji or with Dr. Wayne Dyer or this snap. You've been inspired to what you get inspired with, and anything outside of that isn't meant for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. You need to find you're okay with what you want, and don't think you've got to be this person or be that structure. It's basically about helping people find their own sort of self tailoring. Um, so, so you you basically see people holistically. You're looking at their mind, their body, their spirit their stress levels are past when they can see you because your intuition is so strong. You probably already can see them and you think, oh, I know what that person needs. I know because you've got such a strong intuition already. This is the, this is the thing with like the, I mean, there's stuff I want to do on group level, which is the dynamic stuff, which are group classes, but that's, that's different. That's a group thing. We can do one-to-one. -one. But when it comes to like a hands-on, therapy or session it's always completely different and I, don't, I always like the idea I don't like going with a set modality because that isn't always good I, I want to be completely present with what consciousness needs at that time and moment and you can't get any more focused and stronger than the conscious flow and needs of what the person needs at that particular time and if you stay open I've practiced um, and got certifications in Reiki and other things, but it's they may need more than that. So I just allow myself over the years to grow open to as many different um, healing modalities, which my body naturally is is capable of doing. And so I allow myself just to be an open reflection of, the, of, of what they an open channel of completely what they need, and I won't distinguish or I won't. Um, what's the word I'm using? I won't put anything aside. For example, someone may come in and they're different to the person who came in half an hour ago and the format will be slightly different. There may be someone who comes in for some healing and I'll use, and I always ask people, what, what number do you want? What light do you want? And I ask them to go with their intuition because their intuition knows what they need. This is the bed. Yeah, this is all of it. You've got three different sectors. You've got, You've got the light, the lucid light. You've got the hip, the um, vibracoustic therapy bed, and you've got the music that I do and the healing that I do. They're all separate things, but people can have them all together. Uh, it's a water bed. It's a water bed. Is it? It's conducive. It, yeah, the, the, the no. you've got the. Yeah. Vibracoustic therapy is basically, yeah, like you said, it's a water bed, but it's a heated water bed, so you really oh, penetrate you. I mean, like you oh, said, it's lovely it's, and warm. <laughs> it's lovely, and you've got that floaty feeling. It's almost like a dry flotation tank. It's a dry flotation tank, um, but it's even more different because you're you've got the wobble in it. When you're in a tank, you're sort of you're in the water, but this thing you're on top of the water, so you've got that. Yeah. Because when, when you go into flotation tank, sorry, tank, it, you could be, if you're claustrophobic, I can't go in one of those, because if you're claustrophobic, it's a bit scary, but when you lie on that bed, you're just in a room, and it's wide open, so there's nothing to be worried about. So. Exactly, and you, you don't get wet, you, you don't have to be in the dark, and it's a slightly different feeling as well, and the fact you're actually, you can't, well, I suppose you can have vibration in the tank, but it's vibration that the vibration that's the most important thing. You're getting the vi basically, so it's a vibracoustic table. So you've got a vibracoustic table, 
where you've got the sound coming through through vibration. Um, and the, the, the bed is made out of a very acoustic wood that really carries the vibration. Then on top of the bed, you've got the a liquid water bed. Or a liquid water bed. <laughs> it is liquid. You've got, you've got the heated water bed, which they mm. call uh, the liquid sound bed. And that, so you, you think you're on that bed, it's warm, it's already penetrating the body anyway. And it sort of wraps itself around you because you're sinking into it a bit. And then the vibration comes through and it carries that vibration throughout that you, your skin is your biggest organ. You have, mm -hmm. It's one big organism all over your body and it is an organ. So you think every part of your skin is 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 taken in and being penetrated by that particular um, vibration. Mm -hmm. And that could be any vibration, that could be for anxiety, that could be for invigoration, because it's the vibration that you, in particular what you need is the main thing so not only do you feel relaxed through the, the very the general vibratory experience you also get that particular vibration which which you've chose and there's different vibrations there's some or well, different frequencies some of them are for confidence some are for focus some for empowerment so your your body's being penetrated and with that particular frequency of vibration, mm -hmm. which is a particular brainwave state. So, you know, you're in very good company because uh, President Trump is talking a lot, particularly about light and how healing light can be. So can you explain to us, how does the light and sound work? I mean, why well, does it work? What, what's the principle behind it? It basically works on changing or creating a particular brainwave pattern, a, a, a particular brainwave, like you've got a brainwave state, like you've got Schumann frequency, which is what the earth resonates at, what they call the Schumann frequency. I can't remember quite what it is, 500 and something, 70. Yeah, Lord and Safer talks a lot. About and um, maybe I'm wrong about the particular resonance but it's easy enough to look it up if you google it the schumann frequency and the earth vibrates at that particular frequency and our hearts should match that particular frequency but there's so many electrical appliances and things and electromagnetic things going on with phones and with a lot of stuff that we do need in it to a degree but as is everything you've got the negative and positive and what it's done is it's took us out of our natural vibrational state even women who wear high heel shoes, you're, 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 taking, you're not connecting so much with, with the vibration of the earth. If you're walking barefoot, you feel more connection with the earth because you've got the electromagnetism. You're closer, your skin has got that, you know, you've got the, um, the electronics in your skin. You, you, mm. you connect with the earth. And when you look at like a um, deer and animal when they're out in the field, they're so content. We always look at deers and animals and you think, how can they be happy just sat there in a field? Well, because they're, they're not well, in their cats. head. They're just... Cats, you just have to look at them. Yeah. People all the time. Because they're connected. They're, they're out barefoot. <laughs> More so wild animals, because they're connected barefoot with, with nature, with the earth. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the core of the earth, which is a magnetic, um, a magnetic part of nature that, that basically... Okay draws them down into the hertz, the heartbeat. So of it the grounds, it, so basically you're saying that the light and the sound is ground, keeps you more grounded, more connected to the it earth. Can, it can do whatever you... Feel better in, in the body? Well, it can do whatever you need, really, because it creates particular frequencies. So you can have ones for either focusing, because they've obviously, the person who's created these particular technologies, they've worked out through testing and through um, experience, I suppose. They've worked out what particular, for example, when someone's focused, that may be a particular frequency. Um, or when someone's more receptive, that's a hypnagogic state. And a hypnagogic state, I think, don't hold me on this, is it may be the fatus state you've got alpha beta all right so you're going to trance in some yeah. way and then the body can relax a lot more so what conditions can you heal heal i'm not saying healing what conditions can you 
support with with the lights and sounds there? Uh, anxiety. You say you can help anxiety because you can relax people. The breathing gets more relaxed. The mind slows down. They're more. They're more. They're, they're in a more relaxed meditative state where they can just go into their body and get out of their mind, which is a massive thing for some people. Some people who may have um, insomnia. Insomnia is generally just where the body's holding on to so much stress. They, they can't sleep because their subconscious is, is screwing around with them. So again, that's linked with anxiety. So I suppose you, you have anxiety and then after so much anxiety and stress and depression, you then get insomnia because it affects your subconscious and your sleep. So you can help with that as well because you allow the, the mind to stop which takes them into a, a hypnagogic relaxed state. I mean many people, including yourself, fall asleep on the bed because they're that relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's awkward because you have to obviously, if you've got various people coming after or you've got a time limit, you've got to wake them up. But oh. generally I'll try and give them a, a, a five <laughs> minutes after is if they do fall asleep. I think I'll let their body really take the nourishment. Um, but then they find that they, they get better sleep that evening because their body's still in that relaxed state. I think you yourself said the, the same thing. You've got um, someone who wanted more focus. This person was uh, a man I know who helps people with logistics, helps people, coaches them on business. And he had a go on it and he went on a particular setting which was for focus and he... He was feeling a bit tired, a bit foggy headed before he went on it. And it was someone who was actually helping us on a business program. And he went and had a go and then he came come out and then afterwards he said he felt a lot more sharper, a lot more focused. There's a particular brainwave state for that, which is a very, I don't know if it's stimulating, but it was just a focused one. Then you've got other ones which are good for affirmations. And it was a lady we know, she, she works for a, um, like a, a brand which they sell stuff, they, they want to sell the brand, so they, 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 they need to um, really talk the brand to people, but they need to have a lot of confidence for it. I think she worked, I can't remember what company it was for, it was either something like Arborn or Tropic or, or uh, the one with that cactus, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. And. Um, and she, she wanted to become a manager and she said, I want to just have more confidence. And she said, I said, is there anything you would like me to say to you? Because it's one for affirmations, which for affirmations is basically you're more receptive. Your brain state is more receptive for you for believing something and for creating a certain thought pattern in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, hence why it says it's good for affirmations on this particular program. So I asked her, is there anything you want me during, as you're on the bed, your subconscious is going to be more receptive so I can plant seeds. So is there any particular sentence or word you want me to, to keep suggesting to you? And she said, I want you to keep calling me a diamond manager. I think I went a little bit further than that. I sort of really hyped it up. And mm. You're in trance, basically. Sorry, Paul, you're going into trance. Yeah. Of course, the subconscious is going to be yeah. to taking on new ideas. It's the subconscious, which is the, the overruling thing a lot of the time. Mm, oh, so yeah. Seeding and rewiring and changing and planting positive stuff in their subconscious, which it did. And um, I kept saying, you're a diamond manager. See yourself doing this. See yourself feeling this way. Um, I really went into it with her while she was on the light. And I also had the music for this particular one. There's the music I do as well. And the music was a very um, uplifting, epic type music. You know, the sort of music you get on one of these, these life coaching videos where it's like just uplifting. And, and you really write, you compose all of this yourself. Yeah, I create the music as well, which was secret. And you sing. Yeah. Sometimes. The different things, again, a bit like the light, I'll do it for different things. I've got stuff mm. that's good for bringing up emotion, stuff that's good for invigoration, stuff that's good for putting you in a real... Uh, spaced out some people just want a, a spacey experience mm. something out of this world so stuff for that there's some more dense tense music which is good for putting people into their fear zone so they can really go into their fear and get past it and it's but they'll only get what they need i can only i'll only give what they need and mm. the second will bring about exactly what people need individually that that was kind of leading to uh 
the next question when which we kind of talked about the other day is because i feel that when i've gone on there in distress last year you know when i had a lot of grief and stuff um after the session i was completely detached i felt amazing but then even if i came off the bed and i didn't feel like that then i know i can deal with it because i know it's healing so what would you say to someone who who is going through mental health issues is there a way to prepare them that they may have what you call like you know the hexmeister thing where you you get um side effect you can get the healing crisis i'm probably saying it completely wrong a healing crisis like when you go you can have reflexology or acupuncture and then for a few days later you may not feel that good because your body's adjusting and everything's coming up so if you've got like as i'm saying new people who have anxiety or mental health issues um is it possible that they may get a healing crisis after using the bed and if so what would you be your suggestion how do they do yeah, com completely possible because with any healing modality sometimes you can have something that can be great at the time but it brings stuff up which needs to come up that repressed stuff which subconsciously sabotages things so it's like you could say oh i don't want to go on it then i'm a bit fearful of that but do you want subconscious stuff ruling in your life or do you want it up and out of the way okay. it can hurt but it's, it's a it's a worthy it's it's worth it's worth going through um and this is where the biodynamic stuff comes in. To the biodynamic stuff, for example, it cuts into that. So that would bring stuff up. You'll, you'll, you'll have hurt, you'll, for example, let's not say it always does, but for example, one case, if it, if it brings something up, you're feeling disharmonious, you're not feeling great, you're feeling painful. Well, then you wanna, you wanna channel that negative energy that you may be feeling and, and, and trans, uh, transmute it into something positive and at the same time you want to change the neurology that that's attached to that particular emotion that is brought up so you're not suppressing it you're actually using it to feed something creative and expressive and what i do is with the the, the biodynamic stuff is is basically sound and movement and just really allowing you to go in the moment for example, you're not feeling great, so you go into your breath, and then you you just ask your body to to respond and do whatever it needs to do, and it may be particular movements, it may be this, but don't question it. You just go with it, and we've got an electromagnetic field around the body, which they call a biofield, and that's connected. That's a. I mean, it's different. You've got about seven of these different fields. And they're all different electromagnetic fields and they're related to do with different chakras in the body and if it's something that's come up where you've got issues to do with um, communication that would be your throat for example so that would be to do you either you don't communicate enough or no one listens to you or you talk too much and uh, but people won't listen anything to do with communication issues that could be stemming from stuff from when you're younger where you're, someone didn't listen to you when you were four years old and that stuck with you and then that ends up carrying on a, a pattern and then that may be build up and build up and build up and then when you go on the light or go have a particular healing modality that brings that up because it needs to come up to be cleared so you're feeling that particular communication issue so it may be you need to for example you need to to clear that through sound and you just allow yourself to do it. So the whole idea is you just coach people into allowing their body to move in a way that it just needs to move. You may feel like you need to just go, oh, or do that particular tone, go with it. It may change. You may feel like, um, you may feel like doing any type of movement. It may not even be a movement. You may suddenly, as long as you're asking your intuition, your intuition may say, well, start to um i don't know draw circles on a piece of paper just go and do it don't question Creativity. it just go and do it hmm. and don't question it just go and do it and then you're by doing it you're getting your 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 your, your it's almost like nlp or you're getting your brain out of what the, the the um negative thought pattern but you're not suppressing 
the emotion. You're actually, it's almost like you're, you're letting it out through the activity because this is the idea of it, but you're changing the neurological process that attaches to it because you're, you're focusing it um, and releasing at the same time. So it's two pluses, two positives. And for example, with, um, I can't remember where I was going with that now. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how people could deal with anything that happens after they come off the bed but I mean what I love about your work is you really do know what you're talking about you really research everything you understand it and you can really really explain it and it's so important you know funny, funny, that. funny you say that some people like sometimes it's people get lost in the science of it all it's almost like some people may understand the way I put it, but other people may get lost. I think the way you put it today is actually quite down to earth. Yeah, and it's almost, <laughs> it's quite simple, I suppose. I'm just trying to give it the full explanation of it, but it's just go with an intuitive feeling. All the time, if you feel like you want more energy, ask your body to give you what you need for that and allow your body to respond in whatever way it wants to. But this is where people get stuck because it may be that they want to sit, they may, their body may want to respond in coming out of real high pitched noises, but, oh, I don't want to do that. What are people going to think of me? Again, we're coming back to what, what are people going to think? And we do need to let go of that. That is one of the biggest things we need to let go of because in order to heal, um, I remember a couple of weeks ago when this lockdown started and I decided to sit with myself and I was meditating and the first voice that came up was someone in my family, my sister, and it was, oh, why are you doing that? You know, go and get a job, do this, you know, whatever. And I thought, okay, I get it now. If someone put this into me and kept going on and on and on at me and I thought, well, no, I'm not interested. I'm just going to put that aside. I have a right to feel my feelings, I'm right to let this come up. This is my life, not their life. And I think that's what you've got to do now. You've got to. You've got to let it all come up. You've just got to do it. And this is why yeah. the, the centre is, the whole idea is it's out in the middle of the countryside. We're not in a high street anywhere. We're out in the middle of nowhere, so we've got nature all around us. And in the hall, it really echoes really echoes you get that good vibe feedback so if you if you let out something you get to feel the the echo that makes it even stronger so you really feel what you've let out and uh that seems to add to it and it's a place you can do that if you've got nowhere where you, you can't go out in the middle of a field because that everyone walks their dogs and, you, and and because at the moment it's it seems odd doesn't it in general society for someone to be out screaming in the field you can't do it at home because you don't want to scare your kid or your toddler because you can't explain it to them um, because you just can't because they associate screaming with pain or with being attacked or whatever. So you need somewhere where you can feel safe enough to completely let go. That's what the, the Positivity Centre was primar prim primarily for, is for you to be able to have somewhere where you can release. I don't care what comes out i want people to release what they need to release and if that's a, a scream at the top of their head do it if it's amazing what you're doing it, it's a freedom to be able to do that and yeah. to stop you there but i was also thinking about if we go back to childhood when i watch you with willow and you let her be herself you know as a parent it's just amazing to be able to let a child be themselves, feel their feelings, because that's your way of putting them to self yeah. parenting, I presume. Well, she certainly does. It was a bit <laughs> like what we were talking about the other day. She, she, in the middle of the night, she'll scream. She'll wake up and she will release. And a bit like, a, a, again, what Mick was uh, suggesting, because she does it, kids do it more in the middle of the night. They call it night terrors. But it's more they're they're in a more of a you're in a more of a relaxed state. So all that subconscious stuff, all that collective consciousness stuff that we all pick up on, 
you're filtering it out and at night she's in such a relaxed state it comes up i think that's what happens and she releases i mean you you can't even the sound is so raw and she projects it she she purposely ah, and and you, she's doing it to release does she feel better in the morning do you think after that she feels, she feels better straight <laughs> after she's done it straight after she feels better straight after she's done it. If it be like two o'clock in the morning, she'll do it. And uh, and sometimes you're like at the beginning, we panic and think, oh god, something's going on, or she's not well, or you know, you could even think, oh, she's possessed because it's that like strong. But it is just they're in such a, they've got their bodies in such a deep sleep relaxed state. Whatever needs to surface, their body it needs to come up and come out from the subconscious. That when they're asleep, the subconscious awakes up and it allows them to click into that place which lets out that repressed subconscious stuff and the collective consciousness stuff as well which what we're dipping into more and more now mm. so it's not just her stuff she's filtering out what she's picking up on from the sub con you know the collective consciousness and if you don't have that releasement you go mad i mean that's what dreams are for if you don't dream dreams are there to basically uh, play out fears play out stuff that's why you get the dreams where you're running and because you're feeling that inside so the dream almost gives you some sort of releasement by doing that in the dream mm. because we, we we may be stuck in our life we can't do it so but when she does have these episodes afterwards she has a little cry because it's quite it's a lot of energy i think that she's releasing it's scary for her. it's not comfortable but she lets it out and there's no point me stopping that. Why do I want to block that? Or why do I want to tell her, don't do that? Because I'm, the I'm, the, I'm then going to create a repressed problem and then she will, will, will repress her emotions. Yeah, yeah. Well, why not do it? Let it, yeah. it come out. If it's, when you sit there and when you, like, I, I went out in a field recently and I let out a lot. I let out, it was a very windy day and I thought, I'm just, because we got lucky we got a private field on the land we're on. So I can do that. And I go right to the end and I'm only facing the trees so no one can hear and the, 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 the sound's directed at the trees. The trees soak it all up and they do what's best with it because they're, they're nature. But I really let out every gut, raw emotion I can let out. Sometimes it sounds like a war cry or it sounds like I'm being murdered. And I can really feel into everything and let it out. And sometimes it just won't stop and I sit there and think, there's so much there that I'm hearing when I let it out. Where, where am I holding that in my body before I let it out? And if you don't let that out, that's a lot. Because afterwards you feel exhausted, so you've expelled so much energy. If I'm not expelling that, where the hell is that going in my body? So every single person that can't go out and expel that, that energy that they, they take in, they take in, they get irritated at work all day, their boss will annoy them, they'll feel annoyed because they're not happy with what they're doing because they're repressed, they're not happy with this, and they, they hold it all in. They're gonna, that's going to end up manifesting as, as, as a heart problem or, or this problem or that problem because it's energy and we're made up of energy. We're energy beings. Our cells are just energy. Atoms that we are made up of are just energy. And if you hold all that energy in and that's not coming out, and you don't have any way of letting it out, I mean, what, what is that going to do? What's mm. that, what effect is that going to have on the body? Exactly. What effect is that going to have in the atmosphere in the house? An atmosphere, that the words say, oh, atoms, sphere, circle, radiance. If you're in your house and you're feeling that much energy inside you, you're going to, to some degree, your electromagnetic field of your body is going to resonate that energy and then... People in the house are going to pick up on it and then they'll reflect it back. And then you won't like what they're reflecting back at you for you to feel, to notice it. And unless you notice it, you're just going to keep getting it reflected at you. And then you're going to reflect everyone around you. They're going to reflect you. And it's just going to become a mess mm. because everyone's repressing stuff because they're too scared of what people will think. Yeah. It needs to be released. We need to express ourselves. It's all about letting go and letting out. It's either expressing, let releasing what you've got in you which is stagnant energy repressed stuff emotions that need to come out and also releasing and expressing your natural gifts both of them if you don't release them or you don't express it you're screwed yeah. but you're screwing yourself you literally are what, 
This is what you're bringing together at the Positivity Centre. Yeah, we're basically a space there, where people, in a safe way. A space where people can release years worth of stagnant rubbish which they've stored up in their you know liver their every you can release it to learn about it to learn about how the different chakras how the different energy points how the different organs how everything's interconnected and how repressed stuff affects the body so they're learning they can come to release and they can also come and learn and learn how to be themselves and express themselves and you know what, Paul, also what I love about this is you're a multidimensional human being or you're a multidimensional being like I am. You can't be stuck in just one thing or another. When you're called to do your music, you do your music. When you're called to do the healing, you do the healing. And the same, everyone needs to tap into themselves and find out what it is that puts them together. You know, you, you don't have to be stuck in one thing or another. And I really do. I feel that that's the beauty of it is you've brought it all to a space in the positivity center. People can even go there once the lockdown is over and they can have the, the best ever uh, old chocolates and, you know, things like that. And buy these, I was showing before the crystals um, that you sell and all the beautiful things, of course, simply amazing there we go again <laughs> chapter eight and and the cards and you know it's also a really good place to meet people i've made some extraordinary friends through your but this is mm. the thing yeah you've got like like-minded people that support you in, in doing it and we've got the library as well which is i can't remember the name of the lovely fella um you might know him, the bald bloke who, used to go, who goes to Janine's Mind, Body, Spirit Fairs. Oh, Doug Buckingham? No, another that chap, Nigel. Nigel. A tall chap. Anyway, there's a lovely chap who donated <laughs> loads of books to us, all different holistic health, alternative health, natural alternatives, um, or inter I won't say alternative, integrative stuff, because uh, they should all be integrated together. Mm -hmm. Even aspects of even aspects of mainstream, they need to be acknowledged that they, they do work, but you need to be holistic. And the library is basically all of that. And there's so many different things to, to, to different like, my, like types of people, shamanic minded people, um, life coaches. People, there's so much for people that they can come and look at. Come, come and sit in the cafe once this is all over. Come and have a drink, meet like minded people. If there's nothing going on in the hall, go in there and dance if you need to dance. Shout if you need to shout. Let it out. Do, do whatever you need to do. Um, uh, yeah, or, 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 or book in a therapy on the bed, the hypnagogic light. The, it's all there, basically. We've got everything there to, to help people be themselves, to let go. I sort of break it down. You've got pre, we offer pre-medicinal services which is like the 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 biodynamic sort of stuff where you're helping people be themselves so they don't get in a disharmonious state but then we've also got the stuff there which is the the therapies and the treatments to help people who are already past that people who need to release stuff so you've got pre-medicinal activities and post-medicinal treatments to help people get into a place where they can then start to incorporate the pre-medicinal activities to stop them getting disharmonious again to allow them to keep their body free flowing their expression free flowing on a holistic scale emotionally mentally physically which is for the yoga the meditation for the mind the emotions but then again it all dips into every every other one which is holistic Exactly. Um, this has been an extraordinary <laughs> interview. So much. So it's such exciting stuff. And I can see you becoming more and more relaxed, which is great. Just before we go, I want you to touch on another really strong aspect of you and what you believe in. And that is about extraterrestrial light beings and aliens, because you seem to do a lot of research around that. Um, I know you've been reading a Shapiro's book about that. 
So can you just tell us a little bit about that. What is your, what are your beliefs around extraterrestrials and light beings? I believe well, everything is light. We're light beings. And I believe we live on a planet in the middle of space. We live on a, <laughs> it's almost laughable to think there is another life. For example, it's like rock from the sun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got, you've got, we're one, we're at one solar system in a galaxy. You've got thousands of, so, thousands of solar systems in one galaxy. And then you've got, well, I say thousands, you've got a hell of a lot of solar systems, hundreds of thousands in one galaxy. And you've got hundreds and thousands of galaxies in a universe. And then you've got multiverses. I mean, it's just, space is it is infinite you've got suns that make our sun look like a marble in other in other galaxies that just goes to show you the the, the extremes and, and size of, of 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 how big and expansive existence and life is outside of this bloody planet i mean it's just mind-blowing and to say there's not life out there it would just be silly but and i think this planet come about through explosions come about through flying things out in space that formed what we are so we we are going to have our dna the very makeup of this planet is going to have attributes and, and and ingredients from all over the cosmos and i think even though there's stuff outside we're a reflection of that as well and i think in our dna we hold so many different aspects of what of other um beings and other intelligences we hold that within us and i think the more you become aware of your consciousness the more you're becoming aware of your connection with the consciousness throughout time and space and the cosmos and the and and you're dipping into the, the into that within your dna mm. and so some people say that they're, they're channeling extraterrestrial life i think you are but it's in you as well because you've got aspects of what was out of space in you. We are space dust. Yeah. <laughs> Planet space dust. Space dust. I love it. So what happens? You? I mean, just to finish the interview, it sounds like you you basically do everything. You do loads of things, you know, and it's it sounds so exciting. Um, you have you've got a wide experience of different types of healing music all sorts of stuff that you're bringing together into the positivity center is there anything yet that you haven't done that you still want to do because <laughs> you'll do it obviously what is there anything yet that you haven't you don't feel that you've tapped into yet that you still um, it's more of a case of how i want a place to evolve like, i like the whole idea of making general life a healing activity or to, to just how would you put it like i love the whole idea of just having like my idea of a positivity center what i really want if i had the time and the money and the space and the grounds and the buildings and the, the tools would be to have a place where everything is going on where dance there's a dance area with different time locate like the time located different genres of music you know to suit different people so they know at a particular time they can go and they've got that going on meditation area an art area um making music area um tai chi area or, or, or just gardening learning or everything going on I and mean, you could say well that's life that happens that's that's a high street for example but this particular place is all, everything is coming from with the emphasis of really mindful, really um, loving, really cooperating with each other. So it's almost in everything good and bringing in one place. Sorry, do you mean like some kind of living commune where everything's available all the time? Yeah, everything's available all the time. <laughs> It's yeah. like why do I why do I need to wait once a month for to go and 
I don't. I can dance at home. I can put music on a dance at home. But I want somewhere where I can go and dance with other people. That I could like. I don't want to wait until a Friday night. I don't want to wait until a Saturday. And why is it always at night? There's, there's a great thing called Morning Gloryville, which they do morning raves in London. But even that, they're, 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 few, they're, they're like once a month, for example. I'm not quite sure how often. Um, it, it needs to be able to somewhere where you can go all the time. It'd be nice to have somewhere where you could say, I want to go and do that today. And I know there's going to be like-minded people that are there completely moving and expressing themselves how they want. Or I want to go to a, a, cacao, a, a cacao ceremony that's constantly going on. I want a place where I can go where there's, it's, it's constantly going on, it's constantly available. Or the art, somewhere where I can go and do art and the equipment's all there, where I can just do it whenever I want. shouldn't have to have time zones for it. There should be somewhere where you can do it all, all the time. Exactly. Um, sorry go on you should have that availability and freedom yes but what about do you ever offer like um you know because sometimes i mean i personally feel that it's nice to be able to offer all the services to everyone and i'm hoping that once the awakening means that people will be able to do whatever they want with their lives and that to a certain extent Yes, money is a good thing, but that there would be more equality in that way. So how would you feel about that? Do you offer anything on donations? I know you do offer on donations. And you do offer um, like that occasionally. But if I, I used to, and, and no one really, I used to, we used to have a healing, but no one used to come. It was almost like people, in this state, they, it was paid for. They didn't see there was any worth in it. And... Mm -hmm. I see that as a thing in the future more, but I think there's a long time until we're going to get to that because you, you like we're having to move from one system to each other. And this, what's happening at the moment, maybe is a precursor to that what, with this lockdown. Things are going to change drastically. People's lifestyles are changed just drastic. Everything's changed drastically. The economy and money, everything's, everything's changed. But I still think it's not quite there at the moment. I don't know how it's going to get there. I think for me, my personal focus for me right now is just to, I'm sort of sticking to just change in ways I can change at the moment. I love the whole non-monetary system, but at the moment I have to sort of, with, we have to, having to work in the current system to do all we can do and it just so happens we have rent to pay we need to make a living yes and hopefully things do change like for example i have an allotment which where we grow our own vegetables and if everyone starts doing that more and it gets advocated doing that more and if everyone was, was to eat just not everyone can because you've got different diets but most people can live off, off a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet. Most people, not everyone, uh, for different reasons. I can't do pure vegan. Not pure vegan. I can't do pure vegan. No, but this is what I'm saying. But for example, but you eat vegetables, or the vegetables that people eat. Veg Some people are allergic to certain stuff, but predominantly, most people can eat vegetables. And on a shopping list, that's a big portion of money. Um, and we shouldn't really be eating processed foods. So we really want. Um, homegrown holistic stuff so even if you do eat meat or you do eat dairy you're going to have your, your vegetables with it but you don't want to have stuff that's processed because it's, it's not good for you you want grown stuff you want real food and a big portion of that you can grow yourself so that already would dramatically reduce the amount of expenditure you have to spend out every week and that would dramatically reduce the amount of plastic and waste that comes with shops and supermarkets so there already you're already getting towards not needing so much money so if everyone was to grow their food more and if we imagine having if they were like massive communal um that's this is my idea this would be a great space to have a great big allotment where you've got people there that are growing the food you've got people there that are cooking with the food from last year feeding those who are growing the food 
for them for the next year. And you've got people there who are good at music, entertaining the people that are cooking and the people that are gardening. That's wonderful. <laughs> you've got like, ah, oh, that'd be brilliant. And then you could, you could have it where you have a little dance area. So you have a, a time allotted spaces where you go and do your bit. Then you go and you have a little dance, eat, listen to the music. Then it's like, ah, oh, sort of a little rotation. But it's done in such a, a beautiful way. But to me, that's society, how society should be. There's a great film. I can't remember the name of it. It's called, um, oh, no. In the Green Grass or something like that. It's a French movie that talks about this, this sort of utopia like that. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go back more to living like that. And the, the big opening that's happening. Yes. It's happening. I think yeah. with this lockdown, the amount of people that are centres in the middle of the country, well, not in the middle of it, it's just outside of the town. So we're in the countryside or on the edges of it. And we don't hardly see people walk past. And the amount of people that we've seen riding past, walking past, and the amount of people that I've seen on Facebook sharing stuff that they've, they've had to get creative because they've had nothing to do. Yeah. They're trying all sorts out there, learning to garden, they're learning to, like, We've started this year eating, eating uh, stuff off of the land more, which is naturally there, like um, stinging nettles and dandelions. These things are great for us. And but apparently... You just the reason them. Sorry, you just pick them and cook them, don't you? Yeah. Just pick them. I'm obviously <laughs> careful where I pick it from. I don't pick the lower stuff where the dogs will be. Um, <laughs> but the reason it grows so abundant it's its nature's way of saying, here, eat me. I'm good for you. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks it's a useless weed. It's not. Mm -hmm. God, you, can, you can do so much with it as well. With the dandelion, you can, you can, make, you can make honey. You can make um, creams for the, for the face. And there's certain things in the dandelion which are good for uh, the bones or good for the skin. You've got the leaf, which is great for eating. And you can really taste the iron in it. You can taste all the goodness in it. You can have with stinging nettles, you have uh, soup or you fry it with garlic. Wow. Oh, it's all there. Nettle is one of the best detoxifiers you can have. Nettle. Yeah. Nettle detoxifies the blood. So, Paul, we're coming to the end of the interview. It's been incredible. I hope that you feel that you've said everything you feel you wanted to say, or is there anything else you would yeah. like to the public apart? Uh, um, particularly with what's going on in the world at the moment. Have you got any, any positive and any extra positive enlightening messages to put out there that you want to say? At the moment, there's lots of stuff coming up collectively in the world and a lot of the dark stuff, a lot of the stuff that we was repressed either collectively or individually is coming up in us all. And it may be stuff where we, it then makes us feel rubbish about it. Don't feel rubbish or don't feel any judgment about it because that will only add on top of it more negativity. Just know that rubbish is coming up. Let it out in the best way possible. Channel it in the best way and express it in the best way possible. But just don't judge yourself. Don't judge. Know that there's rubbish that's happened, that's coming up, that's coming out. But just focus on the positives. Focus on the positives. Know that there's rubbish that's going on. Notice it, become aware of it, but then focus on the positives. Okay. And how do people find you? Because you offer one to one healing as well, don't you? Yeah, if you want to either you, you can either email me at donaldpaul04 at gmail.com or I'll you put that can, on if you send it to me i'll put it on under you, can, so people can see. you can find me on facebook under paul mcdonald or you can find the positivity center on facebook that's mcdonald with mc isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> thank you and then uh still not sure if i'm irish or scottish it's one or the other <laughs> but, uh, then you've got the website, which is www.positivitycenter.co.uk, and we're also on Instagram. Um, there's all the information on there. Again, if you want to 
if you want to email me and you want to leave your email address, we can send you what's coming up or what's going on. Um, you have an online shop as well, don't you? No, not at the moment. Oh, I thought there was. You're going to have we one. We need to sort that out. The reason being, the whole idea is we wanted the place to be, I could put stuff online, but I wanted the place to be where people have to come and meet people. I'm trying to get off of line because there's so much going online. So I want to bring, we want to bring people sort of more into as much as we're doing this now. We're, we're wanting to get people face to face, you know, real life contact. Well, uh, hopefully that'll happen soon. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Which is what really what we're doing, what you're doing with, it's a bit of an oxymoron sometimes or a paradox like yours. A lot of the stuff you're doing is online, but we're, we're having to use the online stuff to start to persuade people to become more holistic and mm. get off of this stuff but we're we're using a process it's like you're moving on tv is making people aware of other stuff natural stuff which is going on in life mm. but we're having to use what we've got and what people have got addicted to to do that i i just wanted to say that from the time i met you i've seen such huge changes in you Oh, wonderful. You're so much more advanced in your work, so much more focused. You know where you're going. You, you know, it's really interesting to watch someone because, um, as I say, it's, it's about four years now since I met you, and I feel like your confidence has gone sky high, your self esteem, yeah, different person. And I, I'm absolutely honored to have you in my life. Um, you've changed my life from top to bottom in all sorts of ways and very very grateful to what you and Cicel are doing and I hope that we can have put this across today um, so unless you've got anything else you want to say to the public um, we'll end it today. be and yourself best to get the information out there be yourself express yourself and be yourself you're not here to be anyone else, just like garlic isn't here to be turmeric. Or Lauren isn't, no, you, you were created as you, so be you as much as possible. You need to be what you are as much as possible, otherwise you're just wasting your life away. You know, you need to be and express what life created you, which is you, be you as much as possible. Is this what you teach Shannon and Summer? And obviously we're like, <laughs> Yeah, but it's, 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 it's hard with them. I sort of, you have to teach them to be themselves as much as possible, but they're still stuck. Like they, they might, being themselves might be being copied to a teacher. So it's almost like you've got a, it's that transition thing of what people think being themselves is. Being yourself in a positive manner as much as possible, in a productive, compassionate manner as much as possible. Because you could say be yourself and do what you want. But you may, it may be like, doing something that goes against uh, what's good for other people in a like in a harmful way so when I say be yourself be yourself in a way which don't harm anyone well a good way to end would be be the change you want to see be yourself yeah. and people can see the change in you and then they, they start to ask questions and they start to transform as well into what they want to be, be an example <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hang on, I'm just going to. Uh, so, when the interview with Paul, we thought it would be nice for him to do a nice, gentle meditation for everyone to bring us all into balance and grounded and help us become that person that we're meant to become.